different things they knew were commodities that you had it. It's a matter of life and death. And uh, they had to come up with different ways to be able to get things over to Europe. It wasn't easy. The, the, United, the U.S. Army had a special division in the post office where they would send certain things. And he got in, and he was Hamish, and he got his whole chevra in there, and they started loading up all the trucks. And uh, when the army post was supposed to be off limits, it was, a, it, was in a, it was an area that was authorized for civilians. And one of the army things, uh, was, well, army people came by once, and they said, what are you doing here? He said, I should have you all arrested, and they hit you shouting, and you know, screaming and yelling at them. And he said, wow, well, that was a mistake. I didn't realize it was an army thing. Please, have you got to get it off the trucks now? Get it off, get it off. We weren't supposed to be here. We're not supposed to be here. Get that off the trucks. Get it all off the trucks. And the guy turned around and left. And he said, he turned around and said, okay, get it back on the trucks, get it back on the trucks. He said, as soon as, as he turned around and left. So he didn't have this, this conceit of, of bouncing back. So last year, I should be back here again. If you would have told me last year I would be here again, next year, I would have not. Uh, somebody said it's a good feeling when you're invited back. You must have done something right. Somebody else put it this way. No, they keep calling you until you get it straight. So it all depends how you, uh, how you put it down. I'm a success in the Hashem Kodesh, which mentions it a lot. You have to find this very often in your life. You were never in a certain place, never heard of a certain person, you were never by a certain street, and suddenly you're there, and two weeks later you're there again, for a seemingly totally unrelated reason. It looks like I have no shadows. I never, I never saw this street, I never saw this alleyway, I never saw this, I never heard of this person. Some, I never heard a certain black tire. And your little boy comes home and says it from his Rebbe, then you go here, so I never heard this in my whole life, I heard it twice the same day. So Pshat is that the Rabbani Shalaylam wants you to get a certain message. Or you, there's a certain tafkit that you have to do. So therefore he sent you to a certain street. Now you think you went there to pick up a package. Two weeks later you're driving, there's a detour, you're saying, here I am again on the same street. Because there's a different reason that you have to be here. One way or another. So we often find that you're in a place and you come back a second time to be there. There's a tough kid and there's an avoider for every single yid. Exactly where he has to be and how he has to be in a certain place. And Bemis Ratzadik takes this a step further. Right now, most people are a little bit nervous. Right? If you're standing really on the streets of Yerushalayim, you don't see him. Honestly, you know, it's, just, it's, it's just clear. There. And the first siren went off and he ran. And as someone is running, you see these two Yerushalmis, he says, you know, it's Barach, Mesh Chabashin Achiton, Yam Mazda, okay, okay, you know. Okay, like this, after we went to the shelter, they came back out to discuss it. And in front of Har Tzvi, I noticed there was a man standing only in your shrine. He's, he's professionally steaming hats, there's a whole line. And everyone runs off, you know. Right after that, everyone's back online. He's arguing where he was holding on the hat. He says, he was on he says, no, you're back over here. Like, they're like, as if, like, you know, Akili, like, okay, life goes on. You know, what's the. There's certain like rubber bounce back kayak that Kalal Yisrael has, the Nitzchis in Kalal Yisrael, that cries out, that doesn't, uh, I know, in like my own, uh, so we at the first time the siren goes on, it was like just a little unnerving. So I was in Ezra's Torah and, and we ran into, uh, I was in my B'nai Vayas, we ran into the stairway there, everybody came out. And then the Nashim Tzidkani, they start schmoozing, back and forth, and, and the alarm is over, and all the other men went back into their house. They have been schmoozing away another half an hour. They said, oh, your cousin's brother, your mother, sister, hello, you realize why you ran in here? What, what, why you ran in here? You know, I, I didn't know you were here. I, talk, you know, I had an idea about a shidduch, like it was mine. The, the Kali still has this like, okay, so there's a bomb folder, but what does that have to do with why I'm seeing this person? Now? I, I, know this I, talk, I, know I know her cousin's cousin, so well, I'm here in the room. You, you see that the Siva and the Mesoyvev are totally disconnected. That there's a reason we have to be in a certain place at a, at a certain time. Then is Chaim Olajan that says that since Sheshis and Mebereshis, there never were two Shemona Esres that are the same Shemona Esres. There never were two Daf and Gemara that are the same Daf and Gemara. And the Mara that you dive in tonight, there never will be such a Mara again. And the shachris you're diving in tomorrow morning, there never will be such a shachris again. Why? So the MS, 
in human psychology, there's a whole gambit of emotions that make up who we are. In, in those hergation, in those emotions are a bit of tsar, worry, fear, concern, and there are the positive emotions, excitement, happiness, and so on. And it's a mix. And then is anything you ever heard about somebody, oh, that person is so nervous, that person is so this, so that, we all have that a little bit. But there's a certain mix that creates a sense of norm that we deal with in our nisyanis. When one of these emotions gets overrides everything else, and the person's too excited, or too nervous, or too happy, or too sad, or too depressed, so that the balance begins to shake. But there, there's a certain balance in our lives that makes up who we are. At any given moment, a person's usually worried about something in the back of his mind, excited about something in the back of his mind. I was once on a plane to Montreal, it was a pitsy plane, and there was only me and somebody else on the plane, besides the pilot. And it was a little bit nerve-wracking because we, me and this other person were sitting on one side, and one of the flight attendants came in and said, Sir, do you mind moving to the other side? You want to balance the plane a little bit. I said, Get this. And I had this nightmare, this extra piece of cockish that I hate is going to send the whole plane like this. You know, the pilot's in the car. Why did you eat that? <laughs> so I said, really, in our lives, we're also flying. The Rebbe keeps us afloat. And, and the Rebbe keeps us balanced. The Rebbe wouldn't keep us balanced. We can balance our irrigation and our emotions. And, and, and any one individual emotion could always run out of control and become a sugar nervous or a sugar happy or a sugar whatever it is. The Ramanisha wouldn't keep that balance, so we wouldn't stay afloat. That balance of our emotions of irrigation is never ever the same. It's never exactly the same. It's constantly mixed. And Mamela, the shachris that you're davening on a given morning, the mincha that you're davening on a given morning, the marav that you're davening on a given evening, the black gemara, the hadlaka saneirs, the shabbos mirrors, there never ever was such a shabbos for you, and there never ever will be one again. Because we're never exactly the same person. Whatever the mix of these emotions are, we're never mamish exactly the same person at a given moment. There are times that the Rabbanish Shalom is na'achid klam Yisrael, and that there are certain hergation, that everyone shares together, a certain fear that everyone shares together. And in a way, what it is, it's a forced union of koya chatzibur that the Rabbanit Shalom is putting into us. And normally, a group, a group of people have a certain amount of daigas. But they're different daigas, so it's hard really to feel the tsar for someone else. It's hard to be my Shriti Yartza, the Hele Ber Chaim Mekadosh. He does the famous Lama Bavad, the Chaim Mekadosh says, Yosef and Sadiq said to the brothers, your brothers that I sold you in Mitzrayim. Because even when you sold me, I was still, you were still my brother. I never was angry at you. I understood that it was Ashgachov and Hashemayim. And even the Shasta Mechira, you were also a Chechem, you were, you were my brother. So it was, it was, it was Ashgachov, you should sell me. It's not because you're not my brother. They should put something into your head at that moment. I still loved you as a brother. So they say that the, the Kabrina said that in order for the Archaim and Kodesh to say such a word, it has to be that the Archaim and Kodesh was on that dark. Because you can't say such a word. That if his brother would have sold him as an Eved, he would have said the same thing, you're my brother, this is Ashgach, and nothing to do with the other. So they say that the Yisaru Avoida said that for the Kabrina to say such a word, he also had to be on such a Madrig. If not, he could have not up touched up the Rechaim and Kodesh that way. So the Slalom of Chassidim say that for the Yisaru Avoida to say that, so the, 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 he also had to be on such a level, that he would say to his brother, because now he couldn't have said it. So I said, so why does it stop there? Well, why can't I go and invite her? And why can't all the Gerich Chassidim say, if the Slonim Chassidim say that, because now it really becomes, it gets much more complicated, because you're already talking about different divisions and qualities. But if we were on a higher level, the Taka, we would say that. We would say, oh, for the Slonim Chassidim to say that, and they would say, in other words, it wouldn't stop at a certain point. But when there's a certain Kayach of Tzibu and the Herodish is together, so the milers that we see in each other, and as we're drawn to each other, becomes much stronger than it does under normal circumstances. I had a story earlier this year. It's a small enemy. It can be a little bit more Heinish, so the Nile should be more intimate in Mizukht. My career in Mizukht really started with Ashgach as a storyteller. I'm not saying stories to kids. Then the Eze Siba Shahu, 
whatever, started saying a shir. And once somebody came over to me, and he said, you know, you can't, you can't be a market shir and a storyteller. You can't, you can't, you can't, the two don't go together. I asked him which night of Yehuda that was, which she was from Akiva Ega that was, it was a prima god, but where, who says that you can't be a... He says it's Seichel Ayasha. Okay, so one person's Seichel is not someone else's Seichel, and one person's Yashras is definitely not someone else's Yashras. So I, I remember many, many years ago, I asked him, Mishgiach Zazangazim. And the way I phrased the Shiloh, it was my fault the way I phrased the Shiloh. The way I phrased the Shiloh was, so there's a book for me to go around saying stories like imitations and jump and dance, like a whole shtick, voices and everything. So Mishgiach said no. So I said I should stop. He said no. <laughs> okay, error, like miscommunication. Let's start again. So he said, what's your problem? He says, you didn't ask me one thing. You asked if it's the cover degree. Who's covered? Are you worried about? You worried about the Rupanishan's cover or your own cover? He said, if you're your own covet, yes, yeah, some people will say, yeah, not so nice, but okay, it could be. The Rabanish Lam's covet, I tell you, the Rabanishan has no problem with it. It's not a pagan the Rabanishan's covet whatsoever. Not only that, Ulai said that maybe the Rabanish Lam needs more of the stories than the Magachia because it's plenty of the Giddish and the storyteller is a little more. He says, so it's not a shy ass if it's the cover degree. Who's covered? It's up to you. Who's covered? You're worried about that. So what are you adding to Rachel? What are you asking me? So, of course, that didn't leave you with much of a choice, right? Because if I stop, that meant that so I think the same stuff. So people sometimes say to me, what do you like better? You like speaking to an adult crowd? Or you like speaking to, to, uh, to, to the kids? I said, the mile of an adult crowd is, more or less, discipline-wise, it's easier people sleep. They're bored, they're bored. What are they doing? He looks at his watch every two seconds. Shakes his watch to see why it's not moving. I'm a finish you know. Had a, he used to say, she watch the nights. There was a ZC that used to come over to me. I had to start at 9.30, 9.31. That's if somebody was talking to me. And as soon as I started, he used to fall asleep, and he started to snore at the Zoyichal, and it's so loud. But the plea was, and he would wake up, and I would come to the end of the shear. Okay, the Rabbanish should help, he would wake up. I would say, why does he wake up with Rabbanish should help? Like, you know, Mishlam, afterwards, the chairs are moving, like, what? So he told me I shouldn't feel like I'm such a meyichas, because he used to do this, Libado Lechaim Lechaim, to Rav Schwab also told me. So I said, what did Rav Schwab say? He said, Rav Schwab said it's a very big cup of him, that people sleep by his shears. I said, why is it a big cup? So he says, because it says, Takam Rechaim Kodesh, that when a person sleeps, a certain Kodesh, that his Neshama go up to Shemayim. So he says, imagine, the Shona comes up in Shanai, we come to Yid, Shwab Shir, that's very nice. Two minutes later, another Shona comes up, oh, where are you coming from? Shwab Shir, oh, very nice. Three minutes later, another Shona, how many people have had the Shir already? What's going on? Every minute, another Shona is coming up. Okay. So then it says, grown ups, the Mila is, okay, so they won't come back next time. But kids are very real. Kids are real. Kids, if you don't get them, uh, the back strings are flying and the, uh, you know, this is yamta, the mitten, the bach. They really unravel very quickly. They let you know that they're not interested. It doesn't help. No yichas, no kovid, no other time. So Shwab, like I once said, why does it say, Meshachar, Ves, and Migdash, Nitna, Nevuah, Lektanam, El Shaitim? So he said over on Shamsha, Fogash, and he based it on a story. So when he was a little boy, he had his brother Moshe, and the, the paternal grandfather passed away, and the maternal grandfather came to the Menachem Oval. He was a rabbi in the doctor, he was a chush of Gabi Wood. So he said to them, they should speak themselves out. How do you feel? So one of his brothers said, his little, he said he was a nine, eight or nine years old, he said, Om Papa, you cannot, whatever, the German, I can't tell you what I feel like. He says, no, you have to say, no, but you're going to be insulted. I said, I won't be insulted, I promise. Michael, you my friend. Tell me, but you have to be exactly what you're thinking. So I'm thinking, why did that Zayda die? I wish you would have died, because he's the one who used to bring me presents. So like, why? You know, so the other was like, yeah, he was looking at the fingernails, you know, and then So he said, no, it's not. I told him you should speak to him. He said, to him. So he said, over there from Sham Shofar Nersh, that's when Shacharit and Sanikta are still in the Nevoa, like the animal of the Because for Nevoa to be Chal, it has to be totally Emes. Even if the Shekhar is the shame, diplomacy, Mutta Lashana, Sanikta, Kishalim, yeah, but you're not going to say that to your grandfather, but Nevoa uh, Kenesh Chalzim. So children are the ones that are totally honest. They're the ones that say, uh, they, you know, let's say from, from what the Meshigana says, you know what the regular people think. That's usually the shock that it bears a bit of. Okay. So, so that the children should, un, they say a story to kids and say, okay, and it happens. That doesn't bother me so much. But this year I had something which I never had before. 
Because all your you can't take things for granted, and you can't rest on your laurels, and you always have to ask what's happening to I said a story, a certain story. It was probably the tenth time I said that story. And my pendulum swings very wide. I said the story to Shiva Flatbush, the boys and girls together, and the same story to Pope and Williamsburg. Uh, so it was my it was like, and it worked. But the kids always liked the story. I came into a certain mindset. I started saying the story and made like a little, little something. So one boy gets up and he says, he says to me, he goes like this, ha ha, he thinks he's so funny. And, and the whole like a kid of age started going, ha ha, they started like this sarcastic kind of a laugh. Okay? And then they were like waiting. Every time I tried to make a joke, they all started, ha ha ha, they started like this very facetious, a uh, spot left, like a. And then what, so I said, I stopped making jokes. But then it didn't help. Whenever, whenever I stopped and started, they all started this like so called laughter. And it was like a machlan on Shechus, and the whole place, the whole regime was doing it. Nishtai do and the Manal and the Malamdin, they all left me alone because I'm saying the story. I don't need anyone there, right? Can't, nothing could go wrong. And I'm like, plots it. And there's nothing I can do. Another half hour to go. And I, I stop and they go, ha ha, he thinks he's funny, ha, this, and this went on and on. I said, I said, I'm retiring. It's not fair. Really, the kids stay the same age. I get old. It's not fair. Anyway, it's not a level point. <laughs> so at one point, I mean, I mean, at one point, I was like, so kakacht, I was going to say, you oh, bandit me. But I knew what's going to happen. They're all going to go, ah, they're going to start laughing even more. So I thought, I'm just walking out. I'm just walking out. But I walk out, they're going to go, ah, ah, whatever I do here, it was like Sakharts and Tishnik. And I, I, I was so angry. I remember, I was so humiliated, you can't imagine. And, and like every drop of COVID in this world, you have this youngness to even it out. Nothing, you don't win at the end, the rest of it. So this was really evening out, and I was settling the score here and this one. And all of a sudden, I had this fleeting thought in my mind. It said like this, Shachta. So you're angry at the kids. You're angry at the men now. You're angry at the rebellion that walked out. You're angry now at the parents that raised these kids. But now I was angry at the grandparents that raised the parents. It was really bad. I said, there's only one person you're not angry at, yourself. Maybe the Rebbein should want something from you. I, I know this story worked with other kids. Not sure. It wasn't a chasern in the chet, so the story. So there must be a chasern in the gavra. So the Rebbein wants some. So think, what does the Rebbein want from you? Go think. We don't have to keep saying the story and they're laughing and I have to think, you know. As once by a mechanic, so was somebody in front of me, so he was like dressed in a nice suit, and the mechanic tells him, okay, you have a flaw, uh, clogged fuel line. He tells him whatever, what it's going to cost. He says 40,000 hours, and he starts working on it, and he schmoozes him, and he lifts it. He's, he's talking to him, his, his head is in the hood, he's tinkering away. He says to him, what do you do for a living? So he says he's a heart surgeon. He's a mechanic, he sticks his head out from underneath, he's holding the wrench, he goes, so you also unclog fuel lines. He says, how come I get 40,000 hours and you get 50,000 hours an hour? <laughs> So he tells him, he says, I have to do it with the engine running, he said, that's the difference. Mm -hmm. So I said, you know, I said, I have to think here with the engine running, you know, you know I have to make a chajman nefesh, and I'm saying the story. So I stopped short. So my anger found that pinked when I came, left Yeshiva that day to go say the story. So I met the, uh, the, the Minal, the Haradas, the Barsha Rabinowitz. I don't know why. He told me he had come back from Eretz and he said, Rabbi Yaakov Meishach told him the Zagas had told him the story, and he repeated the story to me. And I stopped the, this story, cold turkey, and went over to a different story. So a lot of times, in the middle of a story, you stop one story, go over to a different story, and then you makash the two stories. So they're still waiting, I should be the two stories, because it has no shachas to each other. <laughs> I stopped and went to a different story. So you have Yaakov Meir, you know, everyone knows, Galitana, he has enough reason, if anyone has a reason to go into a depression and to say, Yo, Bob, but this is not this, and forget it, there's nothing to do with me. <coughs> he is just like an ishkavish. <laughs> Right? Everyone knows that uh, when he was a uh, chos he found out that there was uh, serious issues and he just, whatever it is, it is, not for shame to get him He had one daughter that was very not well. And he took her for, uh, he used to take her to Ramat Shloim up in the mountains, every Rosh Chodesh. So it was a lift her And once she said to him like this, she said, Tantad, as mechlib. He said, Zechid surely I love you. He says, you really love me? How much? My God, it's heart. all in my heart I love you. He says, if I ask you to do something for me, will you do it for me? He says, yeah. Are you sure? I said, if I could, I will. So she says, I want you to push the wheelchair off the cliff. She says, she has enough ready to, you know, that she doesn't have, a, she has a whole life is tzar, yoga, banocha, that's it. So he says, I can't do that. She, she says, no, you could. 
You don't want to do it. It's a sin. You don't love me. Because you just said it. You could. You to push me off. So Yaakovay told her like this. He said, I love you with my whole heart. What I said before, I mean it. But my love to you with my whole heart is like a pitsy, pitsy little flame. Tiny, tiny little flame. It says, the Rabbani Shalom's love to you is like the sun. You see the sun shining? It shines up the whole world. It's a trillion, trillion times more. So let's say I love you with my whole heart and I'll do what you ask me to do. But you want my pitsy little ahava love to get in the way of the Rabbani Shalom's love? The Rabbani Shalom loves you trillions of times more is giving you right now a heart that's beating and lungs that are breathing. You want my pitsy little love to get in the way of the Rabbani Shalom's love? So that doesn't make sense. So she was macabalit and he took her home. This is the story that I told the kids and I woke up. The Manal all of a sudden shows up and he tells me, I think that story was like appropriate for a kid to love. I said, for your kid to love, yes, and then I didn't give him more uh, That night, I got a call. Somebody's on the phone, Mr. So-and-so. Mr. So-and-so, hello, how are you? So Mr. So-and-so says, uh, you said a story, this is my said today. He said, yeah. So I had a son there, so he's going to give it to me now. Why is this such a story? And I'm going to give him back, came from the Dalai Vega. I'm going to tell him his son is a mechitzah, ben mechitzah, and I'm going to say, I was ready to go to the other room. So he tells me, I want to give you a big yashikach. Yeah? That's the, one of the chesrayness of texting. But all the other things is that you don't, you don't have a chance to stop what you wanted to say. At least when you talk, he said, oh, let me hear what the other person has to say before Christ was Jesus, before I should say. So he tells me, my son is a child that's not wrong. And the, the, there's one kid that's married, it's more that's a clock to buy this. Not stop, it's a clock. Shit, it's a clock. By the whole thing, it's a child. So brach no shtick shtick. And at kedekach, that uh, even though he goes to therapy, whatever, the therapist says, I can't help him because he doesn't open up, he doesn't talk. He says, today he came in and he told the therapist, can I tell you a story? And he repeated the whole story of Yaakov Meishach. And he asked the therapist, the Shaila, does the Rabbani Shalom love their sibling as much as he loves that Rebekah Meishach and his daughter? And he said, yes, man. So also the kid was very relieved. He says, now, so the Rabbani Shalom loves him so much, and he's giving him uh, now his life, so it, it must have a shot. Okay. He, he was very relieved. So the father said to me, said to me, Rabbi Shech, that, like, I'm amazed. How did you look at those kids and you knew exactly which story to say? He said, experience, you know. <laughs> So I'm thinking to myself, I know, I know how close I was. I know that I was a chut hasara away from seeing it all a bunch of chutzofer and storm out. I, 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 I don't mean it as a gizma, I'm honest. And it was the humility, right? And, and, and saying that, that the Rabbani Shalom helped me with that last machshor. Wait, wait, stop, 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 get angry at him, stop the world. Maybe, what does the Rabbani want from me right now? From a male leader, as I said, he said, right, Acher is riding on the donkey on Shabbos, and Rameh is walking after him. Behind him, Rameh is asking him, Shilas, and Acher says to him, Stop, stop, it's at Chum Shabbos. He's ready, what's with you? He said, I heard a Basco. It said, Shuvi Bonum Shegovin, everyone can do Chuva, Chutzme Acher. So he said, It's a Taich, and one of the Rebbes, Shuvi Bonum Shegovin, anyone can do Chuva, Chutzme Acher, except for someone that blames all his problems on someone else. If you're willing to take accountability for your problems, the Lord says, I'll work with you. It's Yanam Shil. Yeah, I went off the Derek, went off the day because my Rebbe didn't look this and that. My Rebbe is once I was speaking to a Bukhar. He was saying, you know, he's, why he's doing, why is Michal Shabbos? Because the way they treated him, the people in the shul, the way they treated him. I said, okay, what was the worst thing the people in your shul? Yeah, kid, they were fascinated. What was telling what they did? He's like, I don't know. He goes, you know, my kiddish Lavana, the cards, they always gave me the cards to carry in at the end. <laughs> wow, never. Oh, wow. The, 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 the frat today, it's a very big society of victimization. It's, it's bullying is a big thing. It's, 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 it's a big business. Because everyone loves the that they're a victim. Ah, oh, that's why. It's the animal shield. Not sometimes it's true. But I think more often than not, it's not. This, 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 that, that someone else's fault, it's my father's fault, my mother's fault, my rabbi's fault. So I, I, I think to this moment, I said, imagine, I would have said, you're all a bunch of mechats, I would have stormed out. And I would have said, ah, it's 120 years. They go through every single day. I can't wait for that day. That day, 
between blaming someone else or any matzah that someone is with your pledge, okay. So what does the Rabbani Shem want from me now? Because that humiliation that I had at that moment, there are plenty of times in my life I was humiliated, and there are plenty of times I will be humiliated, and most of the time, it's, don't worry, it, 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 it was coming to me. But that, my, that kind of humiliation, that, I, that, that, that was a new brand. I didn't have it till then. And the male, that, that had to be ma'ayur, a certain kayach within me, that I never had. And we have that. And, and that same is true for a pachat. And the same is true for a situation like what's going to be. And the same is true for... It's, it's ma'or within us kaychas. It's easy to say, yeah, Netanyahu's fault, the politics, I hate the politics, I hate get it. It's a very dangerous trap when you start blaming everyone. Should have stayed in Los Angeles, you know. This is the matzav right now. What do we do with it? It says Rosham, right? Malayim Chorot. It says, Malayim Chorot. Rosham, Malayim Chorot. They have Chorot, they're not a Rosh. Someone says, Ariyat Mekadesh is Lee, Amanasha and Yitzhah the Gomer, even if it's a Russian Gomer Mekadesh, because maybe he had Chalat at that moment, Shemir Chu. So he says that, the, he also heard from Melech Bidim, he said to one of the, maybe from the Hashem Tov, that Chalat doesn't mean they had Chalat on their day, if not, he's not a Rosh. The lame Chalat means, like, if only I wouldn't have done that Shidduch, if only I wouldn't have done this, if only I wouldn't have been, if only I wouldn't have moved here, that's the Chalat. What? The Russia wants something for you now. Stop with the, what I could have, would have, should have. This is my massive now. This massive of fear, and this massive where everyone is, is, is in fear in the same way together, and we look at it. This I saw in Yishalayim also, was it, with people running in, and the first thing, one guy comes out, a rugged off, one guy comes out with uh, drinks. This is like, you know, they're all, uh, they're all there. I said, uh, somebody, I guess I still think it's off the record. Yes, I had a good one, somebody said. How come there's no cake and coffee by the Kaisel? I said, because the Satmar don't go to the Kaisel. They would go. There would be plenty of cake and coffee there. We all have on the kid that, 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 that but you see how Klal is that you're, you're, in a, you're in the bomb full. You don't know where it's going to fall. You're waiting for the boom. This guy's coming out with Rogel. This guy's coming out. He said, one guy says, his father's Yutza, his father's Yutza. He's going, I think that I'm just a Tzidish fellow. Mention Shahid and his dear way is coming out with water. It's there, it's just in it. Now, as he's saying, Vel, Vel, was it, was it, why should I want something from me right now? What does that have to do with the Vel? I should mix in with the Vel. I, I, I heard from, uh, someone told me that he heard from the Gabi of Rabbi Yochan Stalin, when they made the Xavier, the Polish government made the Xavier against Shkita, in the, so they made the town of Sibir, the Gozer towns. So there was a heat down for the Omid, and they were like, well, because it's a flak. So Rabbi Yochan asked them, what, what were you thinking? He said, that this Polish government should have a Matula. So he said, Where do you back to the Reinze mission? He was like, So they hopped later, like the Polish government should have a Mapula so that the Germans should take over. What are you Don't give the Reinzen aces. Don't mix in to what the Reinzen wants to do. There's a Xayra against Schieter. So what should we do? There's a Xayra against Schieter. Don't give the Reinzen aces. You know, if you would have done this, you would have done that. Sharon would have given back to the Australian. They lost. Oh, don't give the Reinzen aces what could have shown. This is my massive right now. How do I deal with, the, with this particular massive? This is my Matthias. It's my Matthias. Where do I go with it? And more now, it's like this time, it's more so the rain was coming to Amun and And the Rosh says, did I give it rain? <coughs> and, and, and not to Klal Yisrael? So the Rosh says, you're right, he's giving it to Klal Yisrael. So what was the happening? What was the Moscone? What did he say there was Moira to them? He said, the Bell says that the, the, before Kabbalah Satayla, the Rosh went to Esau, you want the Torah? By Sertza, not for us. By Sertza, not for us. So the Shem says, not for the Enish to come to the Yidin and, and give them something which is hard for them to do. So the Shem says, yeah. What? The Enish to tell them, you want the Torah? Had Paul. You're going to stand where I tell you to stand. That's so hard for the Yidin. No, no, I'm standing in there. He protects you. I have this, you know, they let me in. No, 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 you spy do. I do, that's for him. No, 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 you spy do. You know what I mean? You know, it's, uh, that for the Yidin, that was hepach their tell. Yid likes to come running to the bank at the last second after they close banging on the doors. There's a certain cheshing uh, and a certain mitzvah. So that's the mitzvah like Bob. This of us that we are who we are. This is our mitzvah. So the rain started coming to Amun and Moya, and, and he says, the bunch of them, there's something wrong because it's supposed to come to clouds. Elamai, we're not who we are. So let me go back to where I am. It's a cute thing, rather, that night after this story with the. Uh, 
with uh, the, the, the laughing and Rebecca Shachter. Someone took me to a chasen a month. He had a brand new Lexus, a new car. So was a couple of drivers younger than mine. And he was in the parking lot. I was on the phone. So he pulled into the parking lot of the hall. So when you finish, come out. So I finished. I don't have no idea how to open the door. So I know in my car, you pull the handle, the eventual handle didn't come off, and he says, that's it. Here, I'm pulling every handle, the lights go on, the music goes on, the windshield light goes on, the yeah. It was very funny, so I should knock on the window and say, Mark, they won't know how to open the door. So I could have called him and say, can I have a should have been in the could you come out? I started right away, who's she gonna, why does he leave me in the car? He knows, here you go again, blaming somebody else. That this is a normal thing? The one she wants, and what does the one she want from me at this given moment? And my phone rings. It's, who's on the phone? Rabbi Dali. Rabbi Dali is an old he, guy who used to dabble in the shtibble. <coughs> now he's in the Moshe's of Kenya. From time to time he calls, and he's usually could talk a half hour. He could talk till he gets to the Akdum of what he has to say. And a, a, a couple last times I didn't pick up for him because I was uh, sitting, didn't have the patience. And he also he calls. I said, okay, I got it. I got it. I got it. Does officially have a minute? He says, yeah, he's going someplace? No, even if I wanted to, I could <laughs> After he finished in half an hour, all of a sudden I saw something which I didn't see, and Mamash didn't notice it. was a little switch, and, and, and the switch said, I should scream at the person who has the phone, but the phone is just me. So, this, 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 this uh, person said that, uh, it said child safety, uh, Locked. There's this little switch that locks the doors so a kid shouldn't be able to open the door. I didn't, I didn't, I didn't notice it until then. Oh, I noticed it. When you get the message, Moshe says, okay, now you can open the door. So I came in. So the, owner, the, the driver of the car said to me, oh, I forgot to tell you. I said, you know, I know. He said, you know how to open the door? Yeah, I know. He said, of course I know. <laughs> you, can see, you can see it a thousand times. By Pinchas, the Shvatim, the Vazen, I said. Right? So the Emishter was Miyachas and Achrar. What's what the Emishter then did? The Nuli was Ein Kulvar. What's the Chiddush? I want to tell you, it's also an inical of iron. No, you knew. What happened? The was is miyachas and achrat. So the Swasemus Banner says that for Pinchas to be who he had to be, there was a certain mix. He had to have a mix of bizyoyness, a mix of frustration, and a mix of reaching deep into his heart. He says, this little bunch of wants me to be. I'm an inical of iron, and also I'm an inical of some of those mefatim of Vaidazar, and that's it. This is who I am. Gigani Vaidazar. And he couldn't have done what he did. <coughs> Unless he had went through both those bizyoyness and who he was, his yichas achar aroin, when he reached it, it, when it reached its full climax, when he became English adam she English show, when he reached the tafkir of his life, is when he took his bizyoyness into account. He took his frustration that he wasn't going to be a kain into his account, and everything in his and this is what the Bansha wants me to do, and I'll do what I have to do. That's when he was zaycha to the shleimus. That there's a moment in our life where it's going to be the, the, the moment of greatest fear, greatest frustration. And, 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 and then when we, when we have seichel to say, okay, this is who the Rabbani Shem wants me to be, I'm not blaming anyone else, then, then we're the Ein Lecha Adam Shem Lashon. Then we can be zeichel to do things that under normal circumstances is never going to happen. It's, 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 it's a Metzias that's not going to be. I said, uh, right after Pesach, I, I, I went on, it was like a Kirib Shabbos, someplace on the west side. So it was, it was a very nice Shabbos. That Mincha Mar very early, made very early Shabbos. It was too early to count Sphere. I don't know which, it was even after the plaque. So even though Shulchan Aruch says, you dive in early, you should count without a bruch and make a tonight, later, if you remember to count, and you know, I said, I, I'm not going to forget. Me, I should forget. I'm going to count later. It was a very interesting Friday night. The, the, this, this, like, this story made me feel very, very small. The, amongst the people that were there, there was a lady there. She was together with her husband. Her husband looked with a gray hair combed to the side, a nice, like, it looked like an $800 suit. He looked like he was running for president. And she looked like a uh, Tommy the Larry girl, you know, like her whole shape was older, but like, so I said, what's this shit? You don't know who she is? So go ask her who she is. So the nice Shari Kachai, they were surprised they didn't hear the story. She was a news anchor for CNN News. She was the one that gave over the news at night. And my sister, I'm not going to get into it now, but she became a balance chiba. And she, because she, she, someone promised her children, she didn't have any children. And she came in one day with a shaitan. They said, you can't go on to television, you can't go on to the thing that way. Because for Steitz, how could she give over the news if she's wearing a shaitan? It's the posh of that. You understand it, right? 
Happy to give over. You want to know when this? I'm just watching the news. You don't know what their kavuna is. So there was a whole garage. And they said no. And she went to court. Look. They didn't let him. She lost her job. This was, I don't know, $3 million job. So she, she, she told her husband one day, she said, it doesn't make sense. She's wearing a shaykhla. You can't even tell it's a shaykhla or her hair. She said, I, I spent $3 million on this shaykhla. I could do it right. I should spend $3 million on the end of the shaykhla. So she went on and put, she put on a shaykhla that would be lavish. It was its knees to see if you needed for the notions of Tony to say, Kazera Avakadesh, that's who she was, whatever, you know, unless you don't hold a shade at all. But it, 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 in, in Kenya, this was the kid of. So she said, I spent $3 million. I wonder if I would have the right, at least let me, let me buy the right thing. Spent $3 million on that, buy the wrong thing. Okay, it comes Friday night. So I'm laying in bed. And you know the feeling you're tossing and turning. And Epis, you, you think you did something. Uh, you forgot something, you're not sure what it was. I'm trying to think, what did I forget? Oh, if not, I'm sleeping. I wake up at like 4.30 in the morning, it's a little counselor. And I jump up, and, and the only light in the room is the little red numbers of the alarm clock. And, and it's, it's 4.30, but it's before the Moed Shacha, after the Moed Shacha. So I take out my little blue leaf, and I'm trying to read it. And, you know, if you only read it, you have to, like, if you get a certain age, you understand, you have to put on your glasses, and then lift your glasses like this to be able to read it. If you're not wearing your glasses, it doesn't work. You have to put them on and go like this. It's a design the kid. And I, I managed to see, oh, the lois is at 4.35, and this is 4.30. I said, wow, I washed my hands, threw on my bekesha over my pajamas. <laughs> oh, I got pajamas. I am shiva, I say, yeah, shiva. It sounds like yeah. that feeling right before the deadline, that's such a geschmack of feeling. Went back to sleep. Oh, geschmack. It was a whole Shabbos, because my mar of Matzah Shabbos, so the person's down for the Umar did, there was no Shabbos, it was very light, and he goes, ayayim, tisha, usayayim. And I'm waiting for someone to correct him. Nobody's correcting it. Panda and no one knows what it is. And all of a sudden I realized that the next time, I, instead of checking when the Moed is, I also should have checked which day in the Sphere. So the first time, this was the first time in my adult life that I remember not being able to make a book. And it's very early in the series. Now it's the first week. It's Pashtun. There's a little, uh, okay, it's the best thing is that no one knows about it. So. <coughs> So I have the yard side, Chav Bey's ear, to my father. The Yedav and Matzah Shabbos, the Marav before. I think then, I was in the Rach of Srivka, told the story to the kids with Shalashidis, and they asked for me, they came to the Omid by the Rebbe, in front of everybody, yeah, that's right. Push the Omid. It's very good, it's Chris. And Milish Menes, I went, oh, no. I'm not going to now. So my mind started racing. I needed up some escape hatch. I said, man, this Mishabir says, if you're Mississippic, Right, it's a sex slave, right? So you maybe count the right day, maybe under the blush. I said, I had said 17. You think at 4.30 in the morning I know what I said? I understand what I said. I started like, I think there's a Charlemagne. There's a Charlemagne that says if you can, he holds if you count the wrong day, you can still count the Rebrochim. Because that's the Indian of counting, you still count it. I said, Lemberg Guru. My father came from Lemberg. Then I said, you know, the commander says, even if you miss a day, you should count the Rebrochim. The Kabbalah should count the bruch. It's the Hilgah commandments. That's it. I'm making the bruch. I have to be sung. I'm a little pickle over here. And it's already after Shunas, and the clock is clear. I hear this voice says to me, Hello, Shachta, that same, that same Shachta voice. Tell me, you didn't make a bruch till now. I could think now. You know, you woke up. Uh, all these Italians didn't think till now. No, I understand. I, 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 in front of a tzad, I think she was Mazakim. You know, this uh, half of Merubadik uh, Italian. You know. You know you shouldn't be making a bracha. That's the answer. Hurry, wants to break you. No, no. <laughs> and all of a sudden, like when we finished the rest, I'm about to. And all of a sudden, I, I'm thinking. I said that lady gave up a three million dollar job, right, to put on a shaitel, and then she said she's putting a shaitel. She's doing it the right way. And ich bin the shiny yid, and because I'm embarrassed. Uh, I said, you know, I'm not going to have to live with myself. And then I had this other flash. I said, how many times in our life do we go through a situation where it's between me and the Rebbe Right? No one knows. Nobody, no Yolodi Isha knew. I mean, now 10,000 people heard the story. But then, no Yolodi Isha knew that I couldn't make it. Because I would have started making the brother. It was a nee, 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 right? So how many times is it between us and the Rebbe It's like, you know, so I said, I, I, I'm not going to live with this. So I asked the Yid next to me, uh, so I was sure he was going to say, 
Ta vusi rot va pasta to, you know, you missed the day, you know. So you're like, I'm gonna make the road because you missed the day. God, and he did, he stepped up and made the brother. And he told me a more ridiculous story, which I verified afterwards from Yidin and Rabbi Vishas Mas. Sapper Rebbe's from the brother. Once, by night of fear, he had an issue with a doctor. It was a medical issue. And it was, they went through the whole night, and it seems that he missed the night. And the next night, he started counting, and the corrected him. So he realized he missed the whole night. He knew what he was up to, because he had his advice every day. So he said, okay, can't count with a bracha. So the kaboom, like, yeah. everyone came to the Rebbe's sphere, and he said, sphere every night. The wrench is gaggle, gaggle, and the whole thing, yeah, I just can't be, it's like a disaster. So they ran to the Pope of Ruch, and an So the Pope of said, right, the Pope of Ruch says, tell somebody not to make the bracha, <coughs> and the Rebbe should be mighty him, so he'll be able to make the bracha. But, so they were thrilled, they ran to the Rebbe, and the Rebbe said, the not for that, not asking. So they said, he says, first of all, that's, I've heard different schools. Why? So he says, why should he not make a bruch? Why should he not make a bruch? Second of all, he said, that one of the Gabon said, oh, but the oil of the Rebbe is from the Rebbe's sphere. You know, he says, he says m- more important that the oil should learn that we're responsible for our actions. You want the oil to learn, that's more, that, 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 that I made a mistake and I'm responsible for mistake, you don't look for shortcuts. That's more important that the should learn. And that entire sphere, he did not cancel the best. There are certain moments in our life, it's between us and the Rabbi Shalom. And there are certain situations that bring out those moments. And at a time like this, this is what brings out the moment. It's, 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 it's a bash goch on the floor. A person told me a Peladika story that there was a little boy who lost his father right before a camp. And the kid was very tzibrach, and he went out to his uncle, took him out to a bottle of calorie for the Shabbos in the Yeshiva in camp. And he said, he was kid, he won't have a moment to say, Kaddish, there was a minion there. Tell him it was exactly a minion. And the kid is waiting in the morning, he's wearing his towels in There's nine people, and they're knocking on the door of this tenth person, he's sleeping. So he's not coming out. So he said, the little boy, he said, you son, but you go knock on the door. He said, how, how can he say no? So he knocked on the door, he says, I said, Kaddish, my father. This man comes out in his pajamas, he says, I'm very sorry, this is my vacation, I'm waiting for this the entire year. No one is telling me when to get up, and he slams the door. The kid died and couldn't say Kaddish. There was no other minion there. Some, I could tell you who, I don't want to say Lashnar, but if I can manage to give you the exact details of the story. He said, fast forward 20 years. Somebody's in the Woodridge Bismedrish. The Woodridge Bismedrish is an interesting Bismedrish. The Baruch Bell was there many years ago, and he gave them a bruch of this, always have a minion. And Kacha, they, they never missed a minion in the last 20 years. You know, the Rav told me a story once about the Shabbos Slichas. They had nine people. There was no tenth person. There was a snowstorm. It was like a guy showed up. He looked like a Malachan Lucas. He said, big red beard, flaming out of a pickup truck. He says, Slichot's darning. He says, he came in. They never, and he left right afterwards. They never saw him before. They never saw him afterwards. So, leave it up to your own imagination. They always had a He gave him a brochure. So, in this wood ritual, this, it, was, it was before the summer. There was a 7 o'clock minion and an 8 o'clock minion, that was it. And he says there was a yid that said he has yard side, but he reserved the 8 o'clock uh, thing. 8 o'clock, he's not there. He shows up a quarter to 9. Did there be another minion? They said, no. He says, what? I have yard side for my father. There's no other minion in the area. So he says, no. there's no other minion. What can we do for you? We waited for you. Because second year in a row, I, I didn't have yard side. For my, I didn't dive in the morning for my father's yard side. Somebody said, who's your father? His father was the one who didn't want to come out for that little boy. He said, I'm sleeping, nobody wakes me up. Right? And the 20 years later, that his son overslept twice and didn't say Kaddish for the, didn't say Kaddish for the father. I said, look, the, the, the Rabbi Shalom wants, now, 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 if that Yid, whatever his darga was, <coughs> his Yitzhahara was to sleep, if he would have overcome that Yitzhahara, he would have reached a certain shlameness in his life, a certain thicken in his nefesh, that would have been just the opposite. So today, rather today, I had a I went to Yaakov Meshach, so he told me this story. He said that his father, that's how he said it. Some of them were Tamidi Hagru. And he says, he was going to say that we think we don't have Yetzirahs. That and the bigger the Yetzirah we have, the bigger the fear we have, that's a symbol that we're at the point where, where our godless comes out. Because that's, that's the mix that the Rav Hashem does. He said, so somebody, so, so he said, somebody told his father that he heard the story, Ish Mipi Ish, Somebody once came to the Vilna Gun and said, the Vilna Gun gave a missive for something he did. He said, listen, I, I have my Yetzirah. He said, said to the Vilna Gun, if I would have had your Yetzirah, you know, that uh, would be different. He says, the Vilna Gun said, Zos nish wissen the fin was the Yetzirah I have, he says. 
Don't say you don't have my answer. You, don't, you shouldn't even know if you have my answer. He says that there, there's a point in our life where we're frightened. And maybe frightened and to the point where I, I never had such a fear before. Is a simon that there's a certain shlamus we could be kind of now that we were never ever kind of before. So I'll conclude with this. There's a year that told me that he was in the hospital where the child was not well. And he was saying a few times, he said, uh, he said, uh, it's Friday night, he's in the big chayim room. He's saying, he's saying his nearest. He says, uh, it locked him, you know, it locked him the right side. He says, what nearest? Okay, let's do it. He says, it locked him, it's 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 locked him. Then he came to the words, Ibusi Lebeisko, and started to cry. He said, that I can't say. Ibusi Lebeisko. Stein's wife asked him, why are you crying? He says, I'm willing to say it lacked in nervous. I'm willing to say it's out in the I'm willing to say it lacked in the But Ibusi Lebeisko here, on the ninth floor, I don't want to say where. He says, wife said, but this is what the Russian wants us to be. He said, this is his bias. He said, he closed his eyes. He said, he busted up the courage. He says, she's right. Ibusi Lebeisko. This is where you want me to be. This is where you want me to be. This is Ibasi Lebeisko. This is where the Russian wants us now. This is where the Russian wants Klaal and Strong to be now. And there's an akuda over here that if we hit it right, it's, it's a chance of a lifetime. It's, it's easier said than done. And, and, and clearly it's ma'achet klal Yisrael. A person, a person, very often a person has his own pasha. The guy is telling me today, you're scared? He says, he's not scared. He says, he's never going through a pasha, a health pasha. He says, he's ten times more pasha than that. But, but part of that pasha is because he's, he's all alone. He says, here the Rosh was being ma'achet us with this. So there's, there's, there's a certain skayach of tzibur, there's a certain shlemus that we could do now, which is a chesh, the Rabbi Shem's chesh, and the Seder at the Ula, that, that'll, never, that'll never ever be, that it, that it won't happen. I know I said that was the last story, but I'll you know, teach you to trust me. So, I said one more nakita, I'll say. That, uh, I remember last year, I had, I had to run. I had a homeless seat, we run to Australia, we had a taxi waiting, so I said, that one was not such a big Vesika person, I had to on uh, Ezra and Chani. So there was a yid, a Swadish yid, who was saying Kaddish. So, and he was saying a long Kaddish, the Swadish Kaddish. And he was saying the whole Perkyovis, the whole Tillum, the whole Zayn, the whole Zayn, the whole And like that, they finished that, and he was saying again, this was Zach Zizur, he was saying a Mishnah and a Kaddish, and a Brian said a Kaddish. And I was like, and, and he calls me over afterwards, and I'm going to run out, he says, Younger man, gefällt mich, sie gefällt euch nicht mein Kaddish. So I said, that's a gefällt the Zayn. I said, I don't remember, it's a Mishnah and a Kaddish. Do you look stuck? I said, yeah, set the Kaddish. So he says, do you know where I'm going to go? No. So I'm going to hear Shimon. He says, I'm going to embarrass them. So here we go. He says, do you know where Shimon is going? No. He says, 98 years old. Okay, you know. So, you know, 98 years old, you can't stand, but you know, it's not exactly. So he tells me, do you know where Shimon is going? Yeah, Shimon is the reason I'm going to miss the taxi. Please let me go. He says to me, he says, You're man who has bought and pays? Do you have bought and pays by Stalin? No. Do you kosher? Try. Do you have kosher by Stalin? Shimon has kosher by Stalin. Do you have Shabbos? He says, This is good. Let's go for all the time. He says, Shimon has kosher by Stalin. Come. So he started going, So that's the Chavak. So he tells me a story that Shimon was teaching kids out of place in Torah, and they, they were arrested, they were sent, the whole Gadu was sent to Siberia, and it came Shalashi this time, he found a bunker someplace there, and he was sang all this mirrors, and he had a piece of watch, and he wouldn't let them stop this mirrors until 72 minutes after Shalashi. They were anxious to get back, but they were caught over there, we get sent from there, and he is the point of no return. So he wouldn't let, no, it's still Shabbos, he sang at these mirrors. He says, they came to Asi and he says, you know when Shimon was Nifta on his birthday, he tells me, you know when on his birthday? At the end of the day, 72 minutes after Shkir. Exactly by the end. So he goes, don't rush me when I come to say, uh, okay, sorry. So then also I realized, well, this year probably also has some good stories. I said, what's it, you get on the style? So he looks at me, he goes, Devil's Gates open Kaddish noch near, and so to frag, he says. <laughs> then I see, you see, he walks out, and he's standing by the, there's like a little porch of it, and he screams, Good morning, Ali Yidin. He says, Yidin, we're the Israelites. Let's go. Good morning, what's in the day? Let's go. I told you, I told you, he's talking to the Siyam Hashas. I walk out a bunch of cats on the street. That's it. There's nobody there. I said, in other words, he reached such a shlemus hanefesh, such a simchas achayim, because he was in the shel tachtis, the ultimate pachat. 
there are opportunities in our life that come only at certain moments. And, and, and whatever that moment is, the Rav is mixing the recipe. And, and that opportunity that we have at that moment to be Mechazik is to be who we are, that's the boss of the Beischa. As a Shemiz Baruch is going to build the bias, the bias of Shlishi, the Meher of Ezra Shemiz Baruch. Oh, nice. Yeah.